Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, which is part 13 of topic three in our database class, I'm going to show you how you can use the keywords in, not, and between to further enhance what you can do when writing SQL queries. So instead of creating this chain of department IDs, right on this slide, I've done something similar down here. We can use the in keyword instead. Okay, so instead of saying department ID equals four or department ID equals eight or department ID equals nine, I could say where the department ID is in, and then I specify a comma separated list of acceptable values for department ID inside these parentheses. Right? So this where clause here is exactly the same as this one in how it will be interpreted by the database. These two have exactly the same meaning. And I think as you can see, if you're a little lazy like I am, this is the better way because it saves you lots of keystrokes or lots of cutting and pasting. So let's see an example of this in approach over here, our live demonstration. So just to make this a little more interesting, let's make this, I don't know, one, three, or four. So here's our set of acceptable results. We've got our ones, we've got a four, we've got a three, but there are no twos. So instead of doing that, let's build a different where clause using what we just learned about the in keyword. So I use the in keyword, and then I specify inside parentheses, a comma separated list of acceptable values. In this case, it's going to be one, three, or four. And for now, just to this out, I'll figure that out. And uh, you'll see, currently we know that the correct answer is employees two, five, six, seven, 10, 11, and 12. So if we run this, we should get exactly the same results. And you can see we do two, five, six, seven, 10, 11, and 12. Everyone is either in departments one, three, or four. So this is nice, right? This in syntax can save you lots of keystrokes which is good if you're lazy. And there's nothing wrong with being a little lazy, right? There's an old cliched saying in the business world. It's like advice for managers. So here's some advice for you as future managers. If you ever want to find the best way of doing something, assign the task to the laziest person on your team. <laughs> and that person will naturally find the very best way of doing it because they're lazy and don't want to work harder than they have to. All right, um, we have another logical operator called the not operator. And uh, what's interesting about the not operator is it inverts the results of a where clause. So you can see it being applied here as not. And uh, you can imagine it just reverses the results. So in this case, I'm saying the question that I'm asking of the database is, uh, hey, database, give me the names of all of my employees in the employee table for all employees except those who work in departments four, eight, or nine. Okay, so by saying not in this set, the employee, or I should say the department ID in this case, would need to be anything but four, eight, or nine in order for that employee to be included in the results. So we'll see an example of this. So if they are not in this set, it will be the inverse. And you can see here, everyone that returned is not in departments one, three, or four. Our only employees that meet that criterion are those who work in department number two, because it's not in this specified set of values. So that can be really useful as well. If you want everybody except those who work in a particular one, let's say, for example, there's something special about uh, department one, maybe it's our managers and we want to limit that. I don't know why we would do this like this. You could do it like this. Give me everyone that's not a manager. That would just be the list there. But of course, that's equivalent to not equal to one. And again, we can see how that saves us some work, right? I could also say, I'm going to copy and paste this because I'm lazy and don't want to spend too much time on this. Right, let's recreate what we did before. Not in departments one, three, 
And so we can take this syntax here. We'll see when we, oops, there should be ands, I'm sorry. And it's a compound condition. All of these things must be true. You can see when we do this, the only results that we get are those employees who work in department number two. And again, that is equivalent to something like this. We say department ID not in one, three, or four. And you can see that this is a much simpler version, but it's the same as this. Functionally, it'll be treated exactly the same way by the database. So when I run this, I get exactly the same results. Cool. Fun. All right. Ooh, the between keyword is another useful one that we can use. This allows us to specify an acceptable range of values using just one statement. So instead of providing, I don't know, like a set of greater than or less thans, we could use the between keyword. And this might make a little more sense to you as a human being. So in this one, we're saying, give me the names of all of our employees out of the employee table, where the higher date is the date where those employees were hired is somewhere between the 1st of January, 2021 and the 31st of December, 2021. So we say between the starting value, the keyword and, and then the upper value. This specifies a range, right? And this is inclusive. Do note that. So that means the values that we're providing here define the boundaries. And if an employee, for example, was hired on exactly January 1st, 2021, they would be included in the results. Similarly, if an employee was hired on the 31st of December, 2021, they would also be included in the results. So uh, these are inclusive range boundaries that we're providing when we use the between keyword. So this here is identical in meaning to what you see here. In both cases, we're telling the database to give us the names of all of the employees in the employee tables for those employees that were hired during the year 2021. Okay, so anyone that was hired between the 1st of January, 2021 and the 31st of December, 2021 qualifies as someone that was hired during that year. So either of these works, right? You can use the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to syntax, right? So I'm saying this condition must be true. They must be hired on or after the 1st of January, 2021. And they must also have been hired on or before the 31st of December, 2021. So we're specifying a range of acceptable values using this syntax as well. But I personally like this one. It makes more sense to me as a human, but whatever. I like to say, I want results between this boundary and that boundary. That makes more sense to me, but you can do it this way as well. Right? There's no right one right way of doing this. You can accomplish this in one of several ways. So let's see just some live examples to demonstrate that this truly does work. So let's get our employees who, I don't know, maybe we just replicate what we saw there on the slide. Only those who were hired in 2021. So that's going to be between the 1st of January. We'll do 2020 just for variety. And the 31st of December. So our only results should be those who were hired during the year 2020. And if we run this and look at the results, we can see that indeed those who were returned were hired during 2020. So that's great. This person was hired in March. This person was hired in October, but 2020. 